Hey, hey, good morning. My name's Jocelyn Briggs. I'm gonna lead you guys through a workout today and I wanna invite you all to join me no matter what level you're at because I'm going to um, offer modifications um, to suit all levels. So even if you're a beginner, um, I am a personal trainer and I've been training for a number of years. I'm also a coach uh, for running and um, I'm super excited to be here today. And I just wanna congratulate everybody in this group for all of the changes that you've been making so far. I get so much um, energy out of reading your guys' posts um, each morning, each day, throughout the day. Um, so excited about the results you're getting because let's be honest, it's really fun to make changes and make new choices and um, create new habits when we're getting the results that we want, right? And so um, we'll be starting in just a moment. I'm just gonna wait. I Hopefully this is working. It says that I'm live. So uh, hopefully, hopefully this works. Okay, so we're gonna start with a warm up. Um, if you're brand new, the warm up's gonna be about 10 minutes and then what, what we're gonna do is something called Tabata. So it's a 20 seconds of work with 10 seconds of rest for, us, for eight sets. Um, and we're gonna rotate through, um, or we're gonna move through the body. So we're gonna start with the legs, we're gonna do a couple of rounds with legs, a couple of rounds with upper body, and then a couple rounds with core. And like I said, I'm gonna try to offer modifications for any level. My only, my only question is, do I need to be ad, um, approved by a moderator? So is this gonna show up? I don't know. Well, I'm gonna get started here and hope for the best. Okay, so we're gonna start with a warm up. Um, so we're gonna start with some nice, gentle, easy twists. I want you to focus on pulling your core in and rotating from your midsection. The most important part of the workout is the warm up <laughs> because you need to prep your body for what you're about to do. Um, I like to think of the warm up as prepping the soil. And we're going to talk a little bit about mindset today as we go through this workout. And um, those of you that are following the five day drop program, and maybe a lot of you are probably into the Ignite program at this point. I wanna talk about some of the roadblocks that we come up against um, in our minds that prevent us from getting our best results. Um, and I think a lot of you are gonna get a lot of value out of some of the things that I'm gonna share with you and um, hopefully some self-reflection because a lot of times we do things, we say things and we take actions and we make choices and our behaviors um, represent um, thoughts that we're not even aware that we're having, right? So. We're gonna do 30 seconds of each. We have three rounds of the warm up. We're gonna start with low impact, which is what I'm doing now. I'm gonna to start to um, up, up the intensity level by adding some hops and jumps. And I wanna encourage you, if you're brand new, to just stick with low impact. The other thing I'm gonna say is, those of you who are maybe already active, already working out, and wanna increase the intensity of what I do today, um, you can add weights. But if you're brand new and um, you know, you're just getting going, just getting started, then I'm gonna encourage you to not use weights yet. You may have finished the five day drop at this point, you may be starting into the ignite phase, right? And you've gotten some results and you're ready for more results and you're ready to incorporate exercise and activity into your routine. And um, if that's the case and you're just, just starting, I wanna encourage you to think of this. I always like to say, go slow, to speed up, right? Sometimes we we try to um, hurriedly and haphazardly get to our results too fast. And sometimes what we end up doing is stunting the results that we can get. And there's a saying in running, which is to run fast, you gotta relax. Um, and to get faster, you have to slow down. Like in training, so I am, my background is a, um, I'm a distance runner. Um, I got a big goal, you guys, this year. And so I'm gonna be talking about that in a second. I have a big goal and I think the first thing that I wanna encourage you to think about um, today, at this point in your journey, um, 
with the five-day drop program or the, or the drop plus program is do you have a goal? Um, which you probably have some sort of goal if you're here and you're doing this program. And um, I want to... I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec. So I, I just want to encourage you to modify anything that I do today um, for your level, for wherever you're at right now. Meet yourself where you're at right now. Um, I want to encourage you to give yourself grace as you go through the program, as you make the changes in your life, and um, forgive yourself for things that you've done in the past. You are not your choices of the past. Right? You're your choices that you're making right now. So as you can see, I've added a hop. If you're brand new, I want you to keep it at, at low impact. Okay? Again, I want you to add weights if you want to once we get into the workout. And I want you to not use weights if um, you're just starting. Right? Because we want to slow down to, to speed up. We want to do things right. Um, my analogy this morning I was talking about on my daily cooking show, I call it, or, I don't know, it's just a babbling show, <laughs> um, was to slow down to speed up. That means the analogy I was using, sorry, is to cultivate the soil, right? Like, and a lot of the elements of the program, the five-day drop or the night program, are designed to cultivate the soil, meaning they're designed to create an environment in your body where your body can thrive, right? Meaning any of the actions that you start taking or the new choices that you're making um, are going to, the results are going to be amplified because you've taken the time to create the environment for success, right? And that's what, that's what we do when we plant a garden, right? We cultivate the soil so that we create an environment for the plants to grow and thrive not just when we plant them, but for the entire season, right? And that's what we want to do when it comes to weight loss and health and wellness results, is we want to create an environment in our body for our body to be able to, to make the changes that we want it to make, right? We want it to drop fat. We want it to produce energy, right? We want it to um, differentiate between rest and stress, right? Like we want it to be able to recover while we sleep, um, so that it can work when we're awake, right? We want it to move from a, from a point of mobility, flexibility, you know, cardiovascular, um, just muscular strength. We want, we want our bodies to be well, and that, that means really sort of making choices that are going to create that environment. How's everybody feeling so far? I have a feeling that my live is not live in the Facebook group <laughs> right now. So you guys are probably going to find the replay and do this with me later. Um, probably I should have gotten with an administrator to, uh, <laughs> um, to allow, admit, admit my, my live to go through. But anyhow, so I'm just going to keep talking and coaching. So our last round is the high intensity round. If you're going all in with me right now, you're gonna go hard, you're gonna lift those knees, you're gonna do fast, quick steps, and you're gonna get that heart rate up, okay? At this point, this is the third round, and we're gonna really drive that heart rate up. Again, we are doing exactly what I was just talking about, and we're creating the environment for our body to thrive during the workout by prepping it, right? Increasing the heart rate, increasing the blood flow to the muscles, increasing, you know, there's all kinds of functions that the body goes through when you take it from the rested state to, you know, an active state. It's a change in, you know, what I call, what we call homeostasis, right? Well, no, I guess not. It's a change to change in its, in its state, right? And so that's a great parallel to what you're trying to do when you're trying to lose weight, right? Or when you're trying to increase health or change the body composition is you're trying to create a new 
steady state or a new baseline, right? More than likely right now, you've been at the weight that you've been at right now for some time, right? Because what happens when we gain weight and we lose weight, it looks very similar, right? When we gain weight, we gain a little bit and then we level off. We gain a little bit and then we level off. And then sometimes we just keep gaining, right? Right, a little bit and leveling off. And when we lose weight, the same thing happens. We lose weight and we level off. Whew, I keep running into my weights. We lose weight and we level off. And so I like to touch on that because sometimes we think the two processes are very different, but they're kind of the same. And what you're trying to do is create a new version of where you level off, right? You're trying to change the direction of it, first of all, and then you're trying to create a new homeostasis or steady state, a new place at which your body sits, right? And Jenna Tracy talked about this yesterday when she did a live, you know, it's really normal to get to a place and fluctuate up and down between five pounds, right? Especially if you're female and especially if you're in your middle aged years, it's really normal to go up and down five pounds between the morning and the night, you know, through, through the weeks. And she has this rule of thumb. She talked about it in another program that I did with her, um, that when she gets to the top end of that five pound, um, that five pound variant variance, it's like, okay, it's time to go back on a plan. Right? She says, you're not supposed to live on a plan long term. What you're supposed to do is develop habits that become your lifestyle, right? So initially those habits are going to be different, right? So they're initially when you follow a plan, you're just, ad you're just adopting new habits, but they take form of a plan because they're not unconscious behaviors yet, right? And the reason that we end up getting results that we don't want is because subconsciously we start to adopt a bunch of habits that are new. They happen really, they happen unconsciously, they happen over time, um, they creep in. And that's one of my favorite elements about the five day drop program is when you do the five day drop and you do um, that, first, that first day, that I, I consider it like a closet cleanup. We take everything out of our life on that first day of the five day drop. Now there's physiological reasons that we do this as Jen and Nika Tracy explain. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of psychological benefits to that. Okay, so we're starting, we're starting out with legs. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do, I'm gonna do everything with body weight today. Um, but if you have weights and you wanna use weights and you're already working out and you feel strong, you can grab weights and do any of the exercises that I'm doing with weights, okay? So we're gonna start out, we're gonna do two rounds of leg work to begin. So we're gonna start, our first exercise is going to be uh, squats. I'm gonna just quickly show you a couple different ways you can do squats. So this is gonna be your classic air squat, okay? You can put your hands behind your head even to encourage your, your chest to stay somewhat up. Okay, that's gonna be beginner level number one. Level number two is gonna be sumo squats where we're gonna drive the knees out to the side. Now you wanna make sure that your toe, that your knees are um, staying in alignment with your big toe. My floor is really cold, I just got a foot cramp. Okay, so that's your two options. The second exercise that we're gonna do is side squats, okay? So this is the beginner version. You're gonna to step to the side into a squat, okay? And the advanced version is going to be stepping all the way up to the side, okay? So give me 10 seconds and our timer's gonna start and we're gonna start with beginner. I'm gonna do the beginner round first, okay? Okay, so beginners, you're doing air squats. Okay, now you can increase the intensity of this in a couple of different ways. You can add weights, you can add a goblet squat weight, or you can add two weights on the side, which would be suitcase squats. Okay, but either way, we're doing squats. Okay, that's round one. Next round, we're doing our side squats. So we're gonna go side, side to side. So I'm gonna do the beginner ones first. 
Okay, that's gonna look like this. You're stepping to the side and into a squat. Advanced or, or intermediate, you're gonna step all the way out into what looks like that. Okay? So now I'm doing advanced. <laughs> Both of these exercises are also not just good for, you know, strength building, especially if you add some resistance of weight. Okay, so this time I'm gonna do the more challenging version, which they're called sumos. And you wanna make sure those knees are driving out to the side. Okay, so I like to think of um, driving my knees to the back wall to encourage. So this is gonna tap into a little bit more of the inner and outer thighs. If you're a beginner, you might not have the mobility to do that yet. And I was gonna say one of the be biggest benefits, I think of both these exercises is, is the mobility they promote. And again, if this exercise bothers your knees, you're gonna to drop to the beginner version, which looks like this, okay? Until your mobility and your range of motion increases. So again, if, and if you're, if you're working out a lot right now, um, Maybe I already followed a regimen. Both these are great, just um, mobility or restorative exercises to do as body weight. So you could use this workout as like a, a recovery workout um, is another option. Doing it with body weight and really just doing the range of motion. One of the things I like to challenge my clients to do is to do 10 air, air squats a day in the morning because it helps um, promote range of motion in your hips and your lower back. So we're talking about mindset and to me I think there's two components to achieve the attainment of the goal that you have right now, right? There's the plan itself that you follow so you want a sound reliable, healthy plan to follow that's going to help you not just lose weight, I like to say lose weight and increase life, right? Because if you really think about this for a second, um, your goal is weight loss, but that's the secondary goal. Weight loss is always the secondary or, or maybe even further down the line goal. The primary goal is increase of life. The, the primary goal is the betterment of your experience in life, right? When you lose weight or improve your health and well-being, because it's not just about weight loss, sometimes it's about body composition, the change in body composition, right? It might just mean fat loss and muscle gain. Um, I mean, it's improvement in your well-being, right? Weight loss is such a overused term and under thought about, you know, what does it actually mean? Weight loss is your gravitational pull, right? It, all it means is what you weigh on a scale, which tells you how much pull there is gravitationally. And there's a number of things that contribute to that number other than just fat. What, what most of us are really after is we're after fat loss, right? But beyond that, we're after increase of life. So we want to find a plan or a strategy that's going to increase life. It's going to improve your your um, experience. Oh no, <laughs> that's no good, Kathy. Kathy's on here. Maybe my camera is set up wrong. So let me change that. Okay, so it could be my camera is wrong. I'm filming in two groups here. There, that might be better. So you always want to remember that when you're looking at a plan. Okay, next up we're doing lunges, okay? We're going to alternate sides. We're going to do lunges on one side, lunges on the other side. Beginner lunges, if you're brand new, you're going to do static lunges, okay? Just, just on the spot, up and down. I want to make sure that front knee doesn't go forward past your big toe, okay? And I want you to think of keeping your torso upright. I like to think of a horse on a carousel that goes up and down. It doesn't go like this. Right, so think of like a pole running through your body, okay? And then if you're advanced, we're gonna do back lunges, okay? You can increase the difficulty or the challenge of this by adding 
weight. So you can add again, you can add it in a goblet form, you can add it over your shoulders, or you can add it suitcase style. So lots of ways to modify one movement, right? Um, and if you're a beginner, you're gonna go with no weights. You're just gonna stick to the basic movement. Again, what we wanna do is establish the base before we build. The stronger and more sound your foundation is, the, the wider, I like to say, um, and more long lasting your results are gonna be. And that's what the five day drop is designed to do. It's designed to, I, here's my analogy for it. And I, I think this is really clever because like I was saying that the five day drop is very um, strategic physiologically to set you up for success. But what I've, I, I'm fascinated with the mind and truly the mind is what allows us to proceed or holds us back in life. You know, if you're not getting results in an area of your life, you can most certainly blame it on something that's happening up here, right? Every single time, because this is gonna be always the limiting factor. Physically, you are capable of unreal feats, right? But, but mentally, you gotta learn to channel your mind and channel your thoughts, right? And so what the five-day drop does is I like to think of it as cleaning out your closet. So on day one of the five day drop, you, you bring everything, you take everything out of the closet, right? And and then you and then at the end of the five, the day one, you get you have your you break your fast, so to speak. But as you go through the five day drop, you start to put in the pieces, your your foundational pieces, right? The pieces that you know you wear. You, and what are they called? In, I'm not a fashion designer at all. Your basics, <laughs> what are they called? You're putting all your blacks and beiges back in. You're putting in your, your blazer and your, you're putting in the foundational pieces, right? And then what you're left with on the floor is all of your excess habits, right? All the extra stuff that you hang on to because you think you like, but you actually never wear, right? In, in the diet mentality, it's like, it's a whole bunch of habits that you just do, but you're like, I don't even really, really like that, but I eat it every day. Um, how many times do we eat something and we don't enjoy it? And we're like, why did I even eat that? And it's just out of a habit, right? And it, it makes you really think about the things you do. Um, and it, it makes you really think about what are the pieces that I really need, right? Because there's a lot of extra fluff in our, in our dietary habits. Um, Meaning, you know, I know we, we eat when we're stressed, we eat when we're bored, we eat when we're happy, we eat when we're sad, you know, we, we eat when we're angry, like, or we don't eat, right? We hear one way or another. We, we, give, we give food way too many roles in our life that it's, it's really not intended to have. Um, and it, it can have those roles at times, but as a foundation, right, it's like you can't keep all your you know, <laughs> you can't keep all your extravagant clothes and not keep the basics, right? You, you gotta have the basics first. And I feel like that's what the five day drop does, is it brings us down to basics and it gives us the functional pieces that we need. And then we can actually reassess, like I'll give you guys an example, when I was, and this is why I think it's really important to follow a plan and track occasionally, because we do a lot of stuff that we're not aware of doing. So we're going into upper body now. So I'm gonna give you a couple options for the next round. I'm gonna grab my mat because the floor is cold today. Okay, we're gonna alternate between push-ups and plank. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple options for push-ups. You can find a wall and you can do push-ups on the wall. Okay, you can find a step or a table and do push-ups on that because if you elevate, it's gonna be a little bit easier. You can do push-ups from your knees like this or you can do full-on push-ups, okay? I have a little push-up challenge going with myself and so I'm gonna do full-on push-ups. And then we're gonna alternate that with, with plank. Um, I, so I would, 
you know, a lot of a lot of you are moms, right? And you know, how often are you cleaning up or making dinner and or stuff sitting out and I pop it in my mouth, right? Like my my kid doesn't finish their dinner and I eat the last few bites. What the five day drop made me realize was how much unconscious foods were going were going down the hatch, right? And it's like, wow, there's there's why, you know, here I was blaming you know, menopausal changes for my weight gain, but yet I was eating all of this extra food, right? And so it's those little habits that we're not even aware of that are often, often contributing to the results that we don't want. And so mindset wise, you know, that's one of the reasons why I think the five day drop is so powerful. Another one is people say, people say it takes 21 days to build a, build a habit, but I, sat back and I watched hundreds of people do the five day drop, including my husband who, you know, hated green tea, was like looking at the five day drop and said, do I have to drink green tea? And I said, well, it's on the program. So there's probably a reason for it. And my husband, um, I will give him credit that when he does something, he's going to do it. He's not going to, he's not like me. He's not emotional about his decisions. So if he's going to do something, he does it all in. Can I tell you, he did his first five day drop in June of this year. Can I tell you, he has not missed a day of green tea. Um, he said, I don't know what it is. I sleep better. You know, I, that's not the, that's not the purpose of green tea. Honestly, I think that's in his head, but regardless, if, if he's sleeping better, then He's convinced it might just be the, you know, the warm drink. I'm not really sure, but he has not missed a day of green tea. So the per the point of that is I've watched hundreds of people, um, after doing something for five days, continue those habits. Um, so don't underestimate. Now the converse of that is people are really reluctant to commit to a habit because it's like the, there's a voice inside our head saying, oh my God. I gotta do this forever, right? I can't do this. Um, Cause we, we, we have so much fear of the future or the past, right? And so I'll give you guys an example. I was trying to quit drinking. I was trying to cut out wine. And I think the fear of having to cut it out forever made it hard to cut it out temporarily. And so in the five day drop, I think people go, if they go in with the attitude, it's only five days. I can do anything for only five days. By the end of the five days, they're locked in, right? And then the other thing about the five day drop that I think is powerful mindset wise is that in those five days, people see um, results. And motivation, I think, comes from the reassurance that what you're doing is going to get you what you want. And I think motivation lacks when we're, we don't have belief or faith that the thing that we're trying to do that's already really uncomfortable for us because it's new um, is not going to get us the results we want, right? And so motivation soars after those five days, right? Because you're like, okay, I trust in this process now. What's the next step? So let me talk to you guys a little bit because I really wanted to dive into motivation today. Um, so let me talk to you a little bit more about what I think you need to do to pair alongside because there's three pieces I think that you need to be successful with any plan or, or any goal, the attainment of any goal. You need a good plan. Okay, you guys, we have the best plan that I have ever seen in all of my years in this industry with the plans that Jen and Nate and Tracy have created for us. Um, you know, and it's, it's the five day drop of the Ignite program and the baseline for all that was, for those of you who remember the, the best me program. So we have the plan, but it's, it's the, you have to have two other things alongside that plan. That's what I want to talk to you guys about today because you guys that are in the group, you already have the plan. You guys that are doing the five day drop in the Ignite program, you have the plan. What's going to get you is not the plan. It's going to, it's going to be your lack of a worthy goal right? And your lack of um, an image of who you become in the attainment of that goal. Okay. 
And those two steps, and that's what I'm, I'm actually teaching a workshop today on that. Um, because I recognize in my own clients, okay, you're going to need, for this next one, you're going to need a step or a chair. I'm just using my bench because it's handy here. A step, a chair, or um, a cooler works really well. <laughs> so we're going to do tricep dips next. So once you have the plan, you have, I, I like to think that of the plan is the vehicle and the roadmap to get there. Okay, so you have that. So what do you need alongside that? You need a worthy goal. What does that mean? A worthy goal means a goal that is, has meaning, emotional meaning to you, and it's gotta have more emotional meaning than the things that you're trying, or the, the things that you're, I guess, stepping away from. I'm really mindful of, okay, so you're new, I want you to bring your feet in, and if you're feeling strong, you can bring your feet out, and if you want to, you're feeling really strong, you can throw weight on your legs. I want you to keep your butt close to that step, okay, or whatever you're using. Okay, and then next up, we're gonna do V push-ups. So you're gonna bring your hands in a formation like this, and we're gonna go into a V, and we're gonna drop the, the crown of our head down between our fingers. This is gonna target your shoulders. The problem is most of us are more emotionally attached to the things that we see ourselves as giving up than we are to the goal that we're trying to reach, right? And so um, I, always, I always kind of remember, remind myself, I will move heaven and earth to... I'm gonna, use a, I'm gonna use a money analogy here. I will move heaven and earth to find money for something I want, but if it comes to paying a bill, yeah, I'm not really that interested. Oops, I a little too soon on that one. So hands are in like this, coming into a V formation and dropping the head down in between, in between your hands. Um, and so the same goes for weight loss, right? I want you to really think about why you want to lose the weight right now. And I want you to think about it not from a negative perspective because we don't respond positively to negative influences. So for example, if you're thinking, I gotta lose weight because my doctor said I need to, because I hate the way I look, because I hate the way my clothes fit, because of shame, of guilt, um, you know, poor self-image, you're not going to get a positive result. You're going to, oh, those are creeping up on me, guys. Um, I want you to flip that into what do you gain from losing weight, right? Remember, we want to lose weight and gain life. And so what do you get out of the deal? And I want you to focus on that instead because usually we're focused so much on what we're losing. I see it in this group everywhere when people are asking questions where foods fit into the plan that aren't on the list, right? Um, and we all do this. So I'm not picking on you if you do this, but there's been, I, I see questions in the group. Can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? There is a list of foods that are recommended. And I would say, you know, and I caught myself doing the same thing, so I'm not picking on you. I'm calling you out, but I'm not picking on you um, because some of us aren't self-aware, right? And we all are, oh, I could have got one or two more in there, couldn't I? Um, I catch myself doing this, right? So I'm calling you out because you might not even realize you're doing it. There's a food list um, that lists the optimal foods that have been strategically chosen for you to get all ultimate results. They're not chosen to, to stick it to you <laughs> so that you can't have you know, certain foods. They're not, it's not there to deprive you. Oh, thank goodness that one's over. I was feeling those ones. 
Okay, now we're going to go on to core. So I'm going to grab my mat. And I'm going to give you a couple options for the first round. We got two more rounds to go. Um, so what, what I taught myself to do when I started this program is I would use the structure of the program. So it would say have protein and a fat. And I would go to that list and I would choose from the protein list and choose from the fat list, right? And that's what I did. I wasn't like, well, normally I would have cheese. Where's cheese? Oh, it's not on the list. Okay, Jen and Naked Tracy, where does cheese fit in? I really like sushi. I don't see sushi. How do I fit? No, no, no. So don't try to fit your old habits into a new plan and get new results, right? Try the new, try the new plan. Okay, we're doing side plank. Okay, so this is one, this is option one if you're a beginner. This is option two. And then option three is going to be adding, stacking the legs and adding a lift. So I want you to really think, kind of to circle back to the point that I started with, I want you to really think of a worthy goal. A goal, something that you get in the attainment of your secondary goal, which is the weight loss. What are you getting when you lose weight? Are you able to do something that you can't during, currently do? Right, so for me, I'll tell you my story, is um, I, gained a bunch of weight through COVID <laughs> and I blamed it on menopause. Not on, the, not on the choices I was making. It was menopause's fault. <laughs> it's perimenopause's fault. And I was, I'm a runner. I'm a distance runner, you guys. And I was not able to run or train the ways I used to be able to run or train because my body was inflamed, my joints hurt, my hips hurt, my back hurt, um, and I just sort of said to myself, well, I think this is just what middle age is like. Um, so I started dropping the bar, the expectations in life, and I started giving up on goals that I had, because I thought, well, it's too bad that I didn't do those earlier in life, because I don't think they're available to me anymore. Um, and then I came across Jen and Nate to Tracy, in a program they were offering in January of 2023, which is really what the five day drop and the Ignite program are built off of. And I was given at the same time an opportunity to do an event that I had never really thought I'd be able to do, but it was gonna require me to do some things I'd never done before. And so I, leaned into this program from Jen and Nate to Tracy, and I, I trust them implicitly. I have the utmost respect for them. They have just unreal knowledge when it comes to the body, and the body in the way I like to use the body, which is the increase of life, right? And so I thought, I'm going to give this plan a try. And you guys, I lost 21 pounds last year and became lean, and strong and had more energy and most of all all the inflammation went away and I was able to train like I hadn't been able to train in about 10 years and so but the drive to make those changes and to do things differently from what I thought was the best for me was a worthy goal it was that event that I was going to get an opportunity to try and you know what the ironic part is? Of it? I failed <laughs> at the event. It was um, a hundred mile mountain race in the San Juan Mountains in Colorado. Um, I live in Ontario, Canada, so there's no mountains here, and also there's no altitude. <laughs> and the the Hard Rock 100 is held at you know an average of 11,000 feet. Um, we dipped down to, I think, 7,700 feet and 9,000 feet, but the remainder of the course is really 
Um, we, I, I climbed on my first 14er, um, but I only got 85 miles through that course. So the funny part is, and, and this is another thing to understand with mindset, is when you set your goal, the purpose of a goal is not to achieve the goal, it's to become someone new in the pursuit of that goal, right? And so that's why your goal needs to be big, and it has to be something you really want. It has to inspire you. Because I didn't finish that race. I didn't complete that goal. But man, I became a whole other level of who um, I, like, beyond what I thought I could be in the pursuit of that goal, right? And then I went on last year completed. to do a 200 mile race in the Rocky Mountains in, um, in Alberta and BC. Okay, the last one we're gonna do is called Core Hollow, and I'm gonna give you a couple options here with the Core Hollow. Um, and I'm, I'm afraid I did not go live in Facebook group today like I was supposed to, so. Okay, option number one is, like, oh, I gotta take my hat off for this one. Option number one is like this, okay? Option number two is like this. And option number three is you can hold a weight. Okay, we're gonna start in about 15 seconds. So, I did not complete that goal, but I, I cannot tell you the gratitude I have for the opportunity to try, right? And then I went on to do a 200 mile race in the Rocky Mountains in uh, Alberta. We actually crossed into BC temporarily. I want you to really drive your back into the ground, right? If you if your back is lifting, you want to lift up your, your knees, right? This is called core hollow. It's one of my favorite core exercises to do. Um, and then we're going to rest for 10. We're going to do that again. We're going to do that eight times. You're going to feel the burn <laughs> from this one. And then, and then this year, um, I have another goal, and it's in May. It's a 250-mile race um, that goes through Arizona, and um, I'm terrified, you guys. There's a number of elements that make this race um, a whole level of hard for me, but that excites me every day to get up, and, and, and when I'm not wanting to follow through some of the you know plans that I've, I've committed to for myself, I remember... You know, that's, that's where I'm going to answer. That's what I'm answering to. So I don't have to do any of the things that I told myself I'm going to do. But I'm, if I want to do that, i got to do this. And so that's why I encourage you, like, have a goal. Like, it doesn't have to be, obviously, it does not have to be a 250-mile race. And it doesn't have to be a race at all. It could be, like, I want to travel. And right now it's really hard to travel because, you know, Sometimes I know my husband struggled because he gained so much weight he couldn't put the seatbelt on the plane on. And that was like motivation for him. Like I don't I don't want to feel that way when I'm traveling. Um for me it, it, it was like my back and my hips always hurt. Right? And I'm like, I don't want to feel like that. That closes so many doors to me. Um so you have to think about like maybe it's like your grandkids or maybe like you have like somebody important to getting married and, and you just want to have like be your best self to go show up at that event like have a goal that means something to you emotionally and then the, the, the second piece of that you guys and this is so important and most of us miss this is you have to remember like i spoke about earlier you are becoming a new version of yourself in pursuit of that goal and if you can't see who she or he is you can't visualize, you know, how she feels, how she lives, what she's like, then you don't know where you're going. We as, as humans, we think in pictures. So like, I know that Nate DeTracy is training for a bodybuilding competition right now. So I guarantee you that every time he trains, he's visualizing what he's building, right? He's visualizing what his body is becoming before it's become that. Right? When I'm training for my 250 mile race, I went and did 9K this morning, I'm visualizing myself in a section on that course. I'm visualizing how my body feels. It feels strong and energetic. Right? If you're 
trying to become 130 pounds and you're 170 pounds, you're visualizing what, who you are becoming so that you're focused on that. Otherwise, if you're not, you're focused, you're, you're focused subconsciously is on who you are right now. And so you're going to have this like imposter syndrome as you're making these changes because you're like, this is not in alignment with who I am right now. I don't eat like this. I don't make these choices. I don't exercise. I don't move my body. But if you're visualizing yourself as the person who does, you're literally imagining your visionary yourself to into that person because your actions are going to follow your self-image. So your, your actions are going to naturally follow. If you're visualizing, visualizing yourself as a really healthy, strong um, version of you, you're going to naturally gravitate towards actions that are going to that are going to channel you that way. So I hope that makes some kind of sense. Um, that's it for today. I hope you guys um, enjoyed that workout. And I uh, thank you for, for joining and listening to my babbling. I hope that I, it helps you. I hope it helps change some of your mindset around what you're doing here. And I'm cheering you on to success, cheering you on to your goals. I'm cheering you on to have big goals um, because you will come alive more, the bigger your goal is. So have an awesome day and uh, we'll see you guys soon.